say a thousand bucks. By the time you pay all your fees and all that stuff, it's gonna cost me a thousand dollars to get to Blade Show. There is really no better way to start the day, in my opinion, than with a run. Last week I was kind of alluding to something that was coming up uh, this fall of this past weekend that we were doing that was really exciting, and it happened. It only sort of happened. My boys are with the Royal Canadian Air Cadets, and they had power flying. They had two airplanes that they had rented, and they get to fly. Now both of my boys gotta go up. All the kids that signed up gotta go up, and I was supposed to go up, but there's a problem with one of the planes. I guess the transponder stopped working. That's the little signaling device that lets the the other airplanes know where you're at so you don't crash. Obviously we had to put that plane down once the transponder stopped working, shuffle things around, ended up getting another airplane. Long story short, after a whole day of waiting around, I didn't get to go up and fly. But I did send my camera up with my son Isaiah and he took some footage for me, watched all the footage and it's kind of, I gotta live vicariously through my son's video camera. And then after that, we all went as a family up to Fernie and we spent like a bit of an extended weekend. The reason we had an extended weekend there was because we can no longer go to Fernie anymore. You see, my parents had a condo there and they've had it for, I don't know, maybe 10 years, 12 years, I'm not sure. Probably five years ago, they started threatening us. They said, hey kids, if you don't use the condo more, we're gonna put it into the rental pool. And it's always been me and my family and my sister and her family. And my parents are pretty much the only people that ever use it, but we didn't use it enough. Anyways, a couple weeks ago, I called up my parents and said, hey, I'd like to come hang out in Fernie. And they said, uh, oh, oh, we have it listed for sale right now. The realtors are showing it. You know, we've spent Christmases in Fernie. We've spent our kids' birthdays, Easter's. Sometimes we'll just do our whole summer vacation in Fernie. I just, I love Fernie. The people, the, the culture, very bike-centric. A lot of young families and a lot of craft. It's a fantastic city and I'm quite disappointed, very, very sad that I will not be going to Fernie very much anymore. But we look back on these things and we're very grateful for the time that we had. So with the spring weather, this is the time of year when you know everybody's excited, a lot of different festivals and shows start happening, and Blade Show, everybody's getting excited for Blade Show. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not going this year. Last year, I don't know how many times I was asked, are you going to Blade Show? This year, I've already been asked a lot, hey, are you gonna go to Blade Show? Hope to see a Blade Show. I'm just not going to Blade Show. Let me explain why. I'm gonna go from YYC. So let's say if I'm gonna fly there on May 31st and then I'll return on the uh, Monday, the third. Let's see what we have. One adult, what are we gonna get for prices? The cheapest flights that I have connect in Denver. So YYC, Calgary to Denver to Atlanta, $900 Canadian. Say a thousand bucks. By the time you pay all your fees and all that stuff, it's gonna cost me a thousand dollars to get to Blade Show. Granted that is Canadian dollars, so let's go 1,000 CAD to, to USD. So we're talking about 750 bucks America. 750 bucks, that's a lot of money. You know, when I think about going to Blade Show from a business standpoint, I really don't see it as an advantage. I don't think there's anything for me to gain. I don't have knives to sell at Blade Show. Chances are I'm not gonna gain clients at Blade Show. I'm not having issues finding clients. It's issues getting the work done. And I think for me, going to Blade Show would be purely like a personal fun trip. I mean, absolutely, I'd love to meet you guys that are going to Blade Show. I'd love to meet other makers, meet so many of the people that I have gotten to know on Instagram or YouTube, social media. It's funny because there's a sense where we really do know each other, but it's so different to meet in real life. And I would love to get the chance to do that. Maybe next year we can do Blade Show, but right now it's just not gonna work out. That 750 bucks or $1,000 Canadian that it would spend for me to go down there for like a personal fun trip, that takes away from like any vacation money that we could have set aside for my family. 
You know, I've got four kids, a beautiful wife, and I look at the things that we did in Fernie this weekend. Those are the memories we're making before my kids like move out of the house. You know, I'm, I'm getting to that age as, as a father. My oldest son is 14, turning 15 this year. We're looking at buying him a pickup truck that he can fix up so when he gets his license, he has a vehicle. Ah, oh, it's just crazy. So that's kind of that's kind of the shift that, you know, you go from being a parent and it's just like little kids running around like, ah, you're, you're crazy. And then all of a sudden it's like, wow, literally my time with my children is like, whew, it's disappearing. For reasons like that, I think it would be foolish, it would be irresponsible, it wouldn't be the right thing for me to do to just say, hey, I'm just gonna spend all this money, go hang out at Blade Show. Not that I don't wanna go to Blade Show, I think it is fantastic, and that's coming from somebody who's never experienced it. You know, I always daydream that, oh, maybe I'll get some corporate sponsor that'll be like, hey, we'll fly down to Blade Show. I'm fully open to that idea, so if you uh, would like me to stand at your booth at Blade Show, let me know, I will do that for you, if you do that. For me, get me there. Anyways, I'm not going to Blade Show this year. I get comments all the time, at least one a day, sometimes five or six times a day. People will email me, send me messages on Instagram. Hey, are you going to Blade Show? Are you going to Blade Show? I'd love to meet you at Blade Show. I would love to meet you too, but it's just not gonna work out this year. But if you're going to Blade Show, have fun. My Instagram will be off during Blade Show because I can't handle seeing all the fun everybody else is having while I'm stuck at home. I'm just kidding. The other week I was on the uh, on the Knife Talk podcast. I gotta be the quiz master, and so I basically gotta ask like trivia to Craig Lockwood, Jeff Fader, Miracle Mamasi. It's a lot of fun, link in the description below. Uh, but one of the things they do, one of the segments on their podcast is that they have, uh, hey man, can I ask you a question? So people will, will email or DM them on Instagram their questions and they'll talk about them. One of the things that had come up was about scallop belts and whether people use them or not. Now in that podcast, Craig asked me to stick around a little bit after the quiz so that I could help maybe give my two sense to some of these questions and one of those was about the scalped belts and I love these things. The reason it's called a scalped belt is because of the edges here. You see they're kind of scalped, they're wavy. This one here in particular is a on J flex that has to do with the fabric or the, the material that the abrasives are bonded to. Very flexible and what those scallops will do is that they allow you to get into tight radiuses this way like like that and it doesn't cut into the the material like it won't bite in like if, if this was just a straight edge and I kind of came on an angle it almost kind of acts like a saw blade right and kind of starts cutting into the steel with these scalped belts they don't do that now some brands are better than others um, this here is kind of like a generic brand and it's not on the J-Flex weight and it does work but it's a lot more rigid so if the radius is too tight, this will actually cut in. And I find some of the no-name brands are not always the best. I stick with these ones. These ones are cling spore. This here in particular is a 220 grit on J-Flex uh, weight belt. So let me just show you what these things do and why I love them so much. What I like to do is on the inside finger groove here of the last ditch necker, you know, I'm kind of coming in with my, my small wheels and I kind of put a bit of a chamfer on there, but there's some hard lines. So I take these J-Flex belts and just watch, watch how they work. This, this is pretty impressive. You see how much they flex there? That is pretty crazy, isn't it? Without cutting into the sides at all. Ouch, that's hot. But look at that. <laughs> oh, I love it. These are like my secret weapon when it comes to making little knives like this. You know what? This is exactly why I am a huge fan of scalloped belts. Look at that. Just look at that. How else are you going to get that finish that fast? Then I'll also use it for kind of cleaning up and rounding off these surfaces. And with that flex, there's just so much forgiveness there. See that? That's beautiful. All right, well that's gonna wrap it up for me in the shop today. I've gotta go have some supper, take the boys to cadets, and then I think I'm gonna mow my lawn when I get home. First lawn mow of the season. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you have a fantastic day. Cheers.